Hey everyone, Ryan Russell here from 20 Over 10. Uh, still watching a couple people, still joining up. We still have about 60 seconds before we get rolling. Today we're gonna go through the new app updates uh, that we just released a few short days ago. We're really excited about the functionality that we've added in. And this of course comes from our advisors using the platform. So as always, uh, we wanna take a moment and thank the advisors who are currently using 20 Over 10. Your uh, feedback is so incredibly valuable. It helps us prioritize those new features and those updates that you really need uh, to be successful. Uh, and certainly we're here to work for you. So uh, we're gonna go over a couple of those today uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Now at this point, everybody should be able to see my screen um, and hear my voice. Um, just to make sure if I could ask uh, a few of you, one of you, just to go into the chat and please go ahead and just let me know that you can see my screen. It'll be the blog, uh, what's new in our spring 2019 app update. And while someone's doing that, um, I would only ask too that during today's presentation, if you do have questions, please drop them in the Q&A panel directly through Zoom. Uh, I have that open um, on my screen and so I'll be able to go through um, and answer those questions either as we're, we're reviewing this or certainly uh, we'll spend some time at the very end. Okay, so it looks like my screen is visible and you can hear me, so let's jump right in. So uh, today we're gonna be going over what's new in our spring 2019 app update. So as I mentioned, we are so incredibly excited for all of these new features that we just launched a few short days ago. We wanna review them uh, with our clients um, and certainly if you have questions, we want you to ask. If you wanna follow along, you can check out our blog um, head to blog.20over10.com. Check out our post, What's New in Our Spring 2019 App Update. We're going to be going through all of these, um, you know, sort of sh shortly. We'll dive in. And again, happy to answer questions along the way. But a lot of really good stuff. Um, so let's dive right in. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 20over10.com and I am going to jump right into a demo account. And we'll start to talk about what's new in the app. One of the things that I really want to focus on today is that, you know, these features that we're releasing are directly um, influenced by the feedback that we get from our current users. It is always the goal of 20 over 10 to focus on the users that we do have, not necessarily the, the users that we don't have. So stay vocal, always let us know what features are really important to you. Uh, and with that feedback, let's jump right in. So some new details that we can do um, you know, with pages. So for those of us that are you know, using you know, those big background photos, a couple things that you can do now, right? When we're editing those background photos, we can go into page settings. You still have the options to upload, change, and edit those photos as needed. But in the past, some of us have been using those big, beautiful background photos, maybe for team photos, maybe for our office space. And one of the concerns was that as screen sizes were scaling, so as people were scaling their screen size, looking at on very large screens or on phones, that certain elements of photos were getting cut off. And certainly that's a concern when it's something like a full team photo, right? We don't want everybody's heads cut off. That's the most important part. So what we've done now is added a new um, uh, uh, size uh, called intrinsic. Uh, and what intrinsic does is it, it lets the size of the hero area be based on the size of your photo. So no more worrying about heads being cut off or weird sizes on different screens. Your image will always be visible as is and will scale with the browser window. So just as an example, I'll go in here and click change and let's just see. I'll go to my desktop here and head over to demo assets. I'll just grab uh, oh, some train tracks. I'll go in and set this to intrinsic, okay? And what you'll see is with this setting, your hero graphic will be treated as an image instead of a background. So it'll scale, propor scale proportionately and does not resize based on the overlay content. When I click save there uh, and I head over, you can see now that the photo dictates the size of that screen. So as we go in and resize 
you'll see that that photo is dictating, uh, you know, sort of the height of that hero image. So it's really great for those of us that want to use those background photos and we don't want to see any of the unusual or odd cropping uh, that comes along with using sort of background images. So problem solved, and I hope that certainly helps. Now there's a couple things that we've done with blogging too. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out briefly, and I'm just going to go over to my, my news page and I'm going to click on manage posts, is these uh, blogging tools are, are all the same really great stuff, but we've made a few key changes even before this latest launch. So for those of you that are blogging, you may have noticed going into your blogs now is a full page experience. This is really awesome because we're not working on those limited windows. Of course, you have you know, all of the same really great functionality built right in to uh, sort of our blogging tool, but you can even expand. So if you wanna have a true full page experience for your content editor, you can do that now, right? Down here in your WYSIWYG, below post content, if I click on full screen, you'll see I can go in and treat this very much now like a Word document. So for those of us that felt compelled to write sort of outside of the app because maybe it was a bit more user friendly in terms of the size of the window, you now have the option to do a full screen uh, editor right through the dashboard, right? So again, in the WYSIWYG, that's that uh, button there uh, in the bottom right. And of course, if you hover over any of these, it'll tell you exactly what it can do. So really, really great opportunity there as well. Now, for those of us that uh, want to go in and uh, possibly hide some of the blog post dates. So maybe we want to go in and there's a concern that those blog post dates um, are maybe not necessary for say evergreen content, right? We just wanna put a lot of great content on there, not date associated. You have the ability to do so down here. Right? So you can still go through um, an order by the date, the pagination type, all of that. But you'll say, see now that you can actually click display post date and put that to no. And when you save, those post dates right, are going to be removed from the post itself. Right? So this is really great. Again, if you want a page of posts dedicated to evergreen content that aren't related to a specific date, you can absolutely do that. And some of us have asked, hey, does it have to say read more? What if it's, uh, I'm using my blog style page for events? Can it say something like join us? The answer is absolutely, right? So for any page, you can change up now these call to actions. I'm gonna jump right back into that blog page, that page settings. I'm gonna head south here. And that action label can be whatever you want, right? So say it's events and we want it to say join us. I can type that out. And when I click save, what you'll see on those blogs, that call to action for those posts is now completely changed. So really great. We see some people doing some really incredible things like using our blog style pages for events. This is a great way to change up that call to action to make sure that it's appropriate for whatever content is on that page. So this is really, really awesome too. Now for a lot of us, uh, we really want to see a little bit more easily what our sites look like on various devices. And the challenge has always been, right, um, you know, how do we view this appropriately? So some of us were sort of scaling our windows. We've just made it really easy for you. Now in your website preview, on that browser bar at the top, right, you'll see resize. When I click that, you can select tablets, mobiles, or even pop it out into its own unique URL, its own standalone window, um, and see. So if I click tablet, you'll see how it responds, and of course, all those elements and how they are completely responsive to mobile devices, phones specifically. You can go in and see how each are treated. And you can even go in and you can pop these out. So you'll see this will uh, open up a temporary build URL so you can see what that those temporary changes look like in its own URL so you can see it full screen and get sort of that end user experience so you can see exactly what those users will be able to see once your changes have been approved and published.
Now, for those of us that have been hunting around considering chase, uh, changing frameworks, you can absolutely do that. But what you should know is there's also versions associated with each of our frameworks as well. If you head down to site settings and you go to advanced, you always have the ability to change framework. This is really great for those of us that might just want to refresh a site, but we don't want to go through the whole build process. Maybe we want to go through and we want to switch directly to Iris, right? And we want to get a single page scrolling site. It'll bring all of that content over with us, which is really, really great, right? Switch it, add it right into that new framework. Now, if you simply want to update the framework to adopt any new changes that may have been added, you'll notice here, right? So I'll select and go back to Fresno. This is the one that we were on. When I go back to that frameworks page, I can switch version to make sure I'm on the latest. Now, here's the thing too. If you're switching around and you say, uh-oh, hey, this looks funny. You can always default to the version that you were on or to the framework that you started from simply by selecting either the framework that you want or that version number. And certainly the, the opportunity for versions allows us to make more changes to these individual frameworks over time and simply by upgrading or downgrading, you can adopt some of that new functionality or choose not to include it. It's completely your call. It's completely your discretion. And it's always available. No extra cost. Now, for those of us that are going in and we're going in and we're making massive changes to colors and we're making changes to our fonts and we all of a sudden realize at that moment wait, we're not designers, we've done a bad job here. You can always default those colors, reset them to your default here simply by clicking. This will bring it back to sort of the start. This way you can go in and you can start again adding all of those colors and changes. Uh, so no need to undo individual ones or remember those individual hex codes, et cetera. You can go in and you can reset both your colors and fonts uh, to the default framework right out of the gate. This is especially helpful for those of us who are sort of changing colors to see how they apply maybe as a DIY or somebody who's building their own website. It's a great way for you to be able to just sort of start fresh, uh, but take some chances too, be able to click around and, and kind of see what you can do. Now, one request we got, and we thought this was really important too, is people were like, hey, this site, the framework is fantastic but we just want to be a little bit more efficient. Can we make sure it's clear without hovering over the page what type of page it is? Now, remember, in our navigation, you can have standard pages, and these are great for doing things like outlining services. Um, we have links. These are great to append things like client logins um, to your main navigation. Blog-style pages, which allow you to create dated or now non-dated posts uh, for original thought leadership or events, and even team member pages too, so that you can go in um, and you can see team members and be able to manage those team members effectively. So now, right when you log in, you don't need to hover over those anymore. We have identifiers here if you have any type of page uh, that is either a blog, a team member page, or an external link. So very easy for you to identify. So as you are reorganizing these pages, because we want you to keep in mind that all of this is drag and drop, you'll see that you can really easily see, you know, sort of how they're organized and also what those pages are to help kind of remind you of their inherent functionality. That's a really, uh, a really important um, aspect here too. And certainly as you go in, you're going to see almost everything has been at least touched in terms of redesign. Uh, more consideration is paid to how things are organized on the page and the small detail are always what we pay attention, attention to at 20 over 10. Even as you go into your account settings, you'll see that you have new styles um, applied for plans, how to delete accounts, how to change um, you know, those uh, credit card details, how to access all of your invoices, and of course, all of your profile activity, which we associate as we send you review materials and communicate with you directly. So all of this really, really, um, uh, some incredible attention to detail. Our designers and our UI UX team is, is top notch, some of the best in the world 
Um, and we're really excited to have them part of our team uh, to be paying attention to our platform and, and really be doing some things. Other great uh, details that we've added, fonts. We've had people say, hey, we'd love to see some of these new fonts, um, Archivo, M Plus Rounded, uh, Statiches, I think is what it's called. These are requests coming from advisor who need to match maybe a brand guideline. And as long as they're, say, a Google font and web safe, we will absolutely add them for you on your behalf so that you can implement them directly into your site without having to manage any custom CSS. You simply have to let us know what those fonts are. Uh, you can reach out to our traditional support channels. We throw them in GitHub and we get them added pretty quick. Um, we're suckers for great typography, so we always are looking for you know great new typefaces that we think are appropriate you know for the platform, and that will be used by our advisors. So we're here to meet your needs. And as I mentioned, just about everything on the platform has been restyled. So buttons, form fields, um, you know, every aspect of the app has been improved to consider legibility, larger edit screens, uh, and just a cleaner interface, all for you. So that's it in short. And what I'd like to end today's call on is actually a call to action that I always think is very important. So I started this call by claiming that all of the changes that we're talking about today have been initiated from our users. And we're always going to uh, prioritize the users that we have on our platform. We want to hear from you. If you have requests in terms of functionality or needs that you may have, even if you think it's just something that applies to you, let us know. Reach out to support, submit that ticket, hit need help, um, let us know so that we can itemize, review as a core team, and prioritize in terms of development. It's very likely you'll see those changes implemented in the new batch of updates that we are making regularly. And certainly as a 20 over 10 user, stay tuned. We have some incredible stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, I'll give you um, uh, a little hint. It's going to have a lot to do with content and content dissemination. Some great stuff's coming. We can't wait to share it with you. And certainly, uh, I wanna personally thank you for taking time out of your Wednesday afternoon to join me and go through uh, the platform updates today. Now, for those of us that need to jet, uh, by all means, uh, you're welcome to go. But for those that may have questions, I'm gonna stick around for a few minutes. So if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A panel, in your Zoom panel, and I am absolutely happy to stick around answer any and all questions that come through, simply let us know. So with that, I'll hang out, but I wanna thank everybody for attending today. And we hope to chat with you soon. Bye-bye everyone. All right, everyone, I don't see any more questions, uh, but certainly if questions do come up, if you have questions about any of the details that we've gone over today or any other details of the 20 over 10 platform, just remember support is only one click away. Click need help, connect with our support team. We are happy to work with you to solve whatever problems you might have. So thank you everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.